Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here, and if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. Today, I wanted to talk about how to fix bloated, wonky, distorted stars in post-processing. This would be a pretty quick and easy video tutorial, so without any further ado, let's go inside and I will show you guys just how to do that. All right, guys, so like I mentioned, we're going to talk about oblong stars and how to fix them, wonky-shaped stars. Now, there's a couple reasons why you might have this problem. Uh, if you take this image, for instance, that I took uh, down in St. George Island uh, two years ago, and I used my just cheap wide-angle zoom lens, most lenses especially the wider angle you get, are going to have some bit of lens distortion, especially around the edges. And if you notice here, this is more subtle. You know, you'll know, you notice here at the edge of the frame that the stars begin to look like little comets, and that's from distortion. The coma could be slightly out of focus, whatever the reason. I don't like it. And so there's this really cool technique you can use. Um, that involves creating a star mask and I'm just gonna walk you right through it. it's real simple let's duplicate the layer like we always do and let's create our mask so we're going to use color range highlights that settings about right we'll have to deselect a lot of this because we don't we just wanted to mess with what's on the edge of the frame so let's hit OK all right good those are selected but let's zoom back out let's control minus to zoom out and let's deselect all of this here so go to the lasso tool and hold down alternate key while you're holding down left click and draw out what you don't want to mess with, which the center of this frame, the majority of it's fine. We just want to work on the edges. And you can always come back and do another iteration of this. Let's get rid of this here. I think that area is all right. Let's just focus on this corner here for the sake of the tutorial. All right, so we've made that selection. Let's go ahead and make a mask and see what that mask looks like. So I'm going to hold down alternate key when I press left click when I'm on the mask. And here we can see what was selected. That's pretty good, but I'm going to make sure this is sampled to black. And go over here to your paintbrush and deselect a little more. I just want the very edges to be adjusted here. Now, if, if you're new to Photoshop, black the, the rule of thumb here is black conceals, white reveals. So whatever is in white is what will be adjusted, and whatever is black will be left alone. So that's why we use the, the black and white mask here. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go back to the image. Let's go up to this corner. All right. Now, next step, and make sure you're you you you're not on the mask, but you're back on the image here. Okay, that top layer. Go to Filter, Other, Offset. Now, there's already some adjustments in here from a previous image, but what you're going to adjust here is your horizontal and your vertical offset. It may be a negative number and it may be a positive number, but generally it's in the range of like minus five to plus five on either plane whether it's horizontal or vertical so what I mean like watch this so if I go minus three you see what it did there with the image right here it it, it messed it up even more <laughs> so you know you need to go the other way let's try zero okay on that that might be all right let's try plus plus one because we're trying to correct the shape of those stars and you'll need to play around with this to figure out what 
makes the best correction. Let's leave that at zero. Could even do minus one, actually. There we go. I think minus one's a little better. Let's see what happens with minus two. All right, we'll try that. Let's go to the vertical. Zero. No, we don't want to go that direction. Yeah, we want to go down with it. All right, let's see what that does. I'm going to hit OK, and you're going to change the layer type from normal to darken. That's where the magic happens. Look at that. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this. Look at all the noise. <laughs> Such a noisy photo. All right. So here's before, here's after. Before, after. You see, notice right in here where it changes from being a more, from a, it changes from looking like a little comet to a more round shape. Now, on this scale, you could just leave it like this. Now it doesn't, you, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking. Just It's really to taste, but if you zoom out to right here, look at, look at the difference. You see that? So that's, that's another great way to, this is a great method for reducing the oblong shaped stars that you get, whether if it's from coma, lens distortion, being out of focus, whatever. We'll do one more example. And I've only had this really in a couple images because I always, I try to always use the field flattener with my refractor. The Mac nude I have has a completely, oh wait, not that one. Although that's a great, I love this. I love this image. That's not the one I wanted to demo. Here we go. The uh, Mac nude that I have has a perfect flat field, no issue there. And the RC I have has a really flat field. So I haven't really had too many problems with this. This is my first go at M42 last year and really looking forward to imaging this again this year to get more data on it. Uh, but if you look at the corners, I, for this one, I wanted to get in a little bit tighter. So I did not use the field flattener and I didn't realize how much distortion lens distortion there is in, and most of it's cropped out guys in this image here. In fact, let me pull up the original because it's, pretty tremendous the amount of lens distortion that's in this photo here we go here's the uncropped look at look at the edges of this field I mean they are just oop. look at that really bad lens distortion in the corners so we get some like oval egg shaped stars so same principle um, I won't walk you through it, but I just wanted to show you the an example. Oh, here it's real bad on this side. Look at that. That that almost might be too much to correct. I mean, we can try it. Let's, but this would definitely be easy to correct because they're just kind of oval shaped. These are. Well, let's just see what happens. Let's duplicate the layer. Let's do a star mask. Let's see what it can do. No, we don't want to select that much. Just the stars. See if that'll yep all right let's let's expand that selection a little bit two pixels oh, four pixels there we go all right my four pixels and uh, let's see we want to deselect yeah we want to deselect a lot of this so just as before go to lasso hold down the alternate key and let's deselect all of this because those are fine we're just looking at the edge of the field. Okay. Let's make a mask out of that. Let's take a look at that mask. Yeah, it'll work for this. I would say with this particular one, because it's so much more severe in the left than it is on the right, you would want to go back and deselect all this too. Do two separate iterations if there's that much variation, because whatever adjustment you do over here, it's going to do over here if it's included in the mask. Okay. So, but we're just going to look at this corner. Let's go back to this. Scroll up. All right. So we've got that masked. Let's go to filter, other, offset. And let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to have to play around with these numbers until these look more round. And you're going to have... Yeah, this one's going to have some serious... Let's go five. Serious halos you're going to have to correct. Let's go minus two. See what happens there. No. Zero. 
All right, let's try oop, yeah, zero. Let's see, let's just try that. Okay, so let's try that there. Darken. All right, before, after. So it, it helped a good bit. Now, you're going to, it, it's leaving some, the only thing about the severe cases <laughs> like this, it leaves a bit of a halo from that adjustment, which you can come back in, smooth out with a healing brush or clone stamp. It's a lot of work, but if you've got a really nice image and it's the only one you got and you want to salvage the corners, this is, this is the best way I know how to do it. So there you go. And like I said, if you, you can, uh, you can go ahead and after making that adjustment, you can adjust these corners. Uh, you can smooth out these halos, clone, clone stamp them, or healing brush, spot healing brush those out of there. It'll take some time, but it would help. And then you could run another iteration of that and get nice round stars. Let's just say you wanted to adjust just one star. This star just was a little too bloated for your taste, and you just didn't like the look of it. So what you would do is just make a selection of this star like so okay right there get that centered filter distort and spherize and if you slide this over look what happens here it just shrinks it right on down i mean you can get pretty extreme with it but you'll notice a halo develops but let's just go right about i mean here's the original let's just go right about here Boom. So that's a great way to minimize some of those larger bloated stars. And then, of course, the most common method for reducing stars on a larger scale is using the color range to select a mask. Let's get all these stars here. Let's deselect this. We don't want to mess with the... There we go. The nebula itself, just these stars. And then go to Filter, Other, Minimum. And in the Minimum Pass, you can get see a preview here of how much it reduces them. Three, I think, is a little aggressive. I'd probably go to like something like a two. And there you go. Here's Before. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's before the minimizing. After. Takes all those bright ones. And it just makes the nebula pop that much more from the picture. And this is a personal preference type thing. Uh, me personally, stars don't bother me that much. If you've already got a lot of detail punching through. You know, if the stars are there. Uh, you know, me personally, I like to reduce them a little bit. Just to make it pop a little. But this to me is even too much. I, I prefer this. But that's all, you know, personal preference. But that's it. That's how you would do minimizing in a larger scale using the minimum filter and those are the three techniques i use for minimizing stars in the entire image for minimizing just one or two stars correcting bloated stars or fixing those wonky oblong shaped stars in the edge of a field well guys that concludes our video for the day if you felt like you got something out of it you learned something be sure to give me a thumbs up think about subscribing and liking and if you're interested in any of the gear that I use or that I recommend, I've got some links down in the description below that'll help you get started on the right foot. And as always, God bless. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking, okay? Thanks for watching. And until next time, cheers, guys.